there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World. And today we're here at Mystic Seaport in Mystic, Connecticut. And today what we have for you are the don'ts of visiting Connecticut. And I want to start off by saying, look, don't think they're called nutmeggers here because they're good at soccer. Look, if you didn't know, Connecticut is actually the nutmeg state. And no one's really exactly sure why they call it that. But I know for sure it's not because they can kick a soccer ball between somebody's legs. Because this, this is a basketball state for sure. So I want to start off with that one. And, and my second don't, if you're looking to come to Connecticut, don't pass up coming here to Mystic Seaport. This is one of the most visited attractions in the state of Connecticut. It's a recreated 19th century basically fishing village and you can go around and they have all the huts around here and you can see where the workers were and they have people doing demonstrations of how to do certain things it doesn't matter if you're young or old there's something for you to do when you are here they got a planetarium here you can go and ride on some of the boats heck they even have summer camps here we can learn how to sail my kid has spent three weeks over the last few years on the joseph conrad right behind you learning how to sail out on these beautiful waters so there's a lot of stuff you can do when you are here and it's a full day of things to do. I mean, don't worry, they got food for you here when you're, when you're here. So you can like, <laughs> you can be taken care of when you are here, but definitely one of the things you want to check out and see when you are here. And if you are here in Mystic, you know, they've got other stuff besides the seaport. You got the aquarium up by I-95. You can go down to the downtown with all the shops and everything and the drawbridge. So there's plenty of stuff to do. So, but, but if you are coming to Mystic, don't skip the seaport. It is a must when you are here in Connecticut. Now for my non-history loving travelers, my next stone for you is don't expect to get too comfy on the beaches here in Connecticut. I know when you, when you look at a map, you see, wow, look at all that coastline. Oh, it's gorgeous coastline here in Connecticut. I mean, it's beautiful. You're going to take picture after picture, video after video of all that rugged coastline. Look, you got a state park with about two miles of like nice sandy beach you can go on. But in general, it's very much a rocky beach here, okay? Everywhere you're going to go. So it's cool for hikes. It's cool for walks. It's cool to lay out and have a picnic, but not for that sandy beach relaxing time, okay? So have a heads up for that. But what makes it cool is actually you can do some really good crabbing when you're here. Now, my next stone for you is if you're going to be coming to Connecticut, probably you're going to be on I-95 at least part of the time. That is the highway that goes across the state. And I will tell you, it can be a little bit infuriated and frustrating driving on I-95. And my don't for you is don't think you have to drive I-95. You can take the Merritt Parkway instead, or you can just drive through on some of these beautiful back roads I have here in Connecticut. And I'll be honest, we've been driving through the back roads and there's hardly anybody on them, okay? So don't feel like I-95 is a must. Just know you have other options out there. Now, no matter where you are driving in Connecticut, I will say is don't forget constant vigilance when you are driving. You've got to look because, yes, you've got the New York drivers coming through that the people from Connecticut, the nutmeggers don't like, and the Massels driving through that the nutmeggers don't like. And, and the thing is, it's not just people from out of state that frustrate with you with driving. You need to pay attention for. There's also a ton of deer that are here. I mean, you got to be careful because I've been, I mean, we've seen multiple deer on the back roads, on the highways. Heck, where we're staying here in Vistic, deer just walking through all the time. So, do always be looking. And one thing is, if you're going to be taking the back roads, don't expect it to be as fast as you think it's going to be when you're driving. Because it might be, oh, it's six miles to there. And it might be 20 minutes because you have a lot of bends in the roads, a lot of up and downs, a lot of undulation in the countryside here. And I mean, it's gorgeous. Don't get me wrong. You'll see beautiful homes, cute villages. I mean, it's Litchfield County. I'll talk about that later. But it's gorgeous. But you do need to pay attention because with those bends, with those turns, with the thin roads, with the deer, with the crazy drivers, sometimes it can be a bit dangerous okay so just have a heads up but one thing i will say if you can um don't fill up your gas tank in connecticut their gas prices are like stupid expensive so actually if you can get to rhode island if you're passing through fill up i don't care if you're like oh we're like a quarter tank left you should stop in rhode island even if you just go to westerly which is just up the road here you can save quite a few pennies on the gas by buying it there. I mean, heck, even Massachusetts has cheaper gas, it seems like, than here in Connecticut, okay? I mean, New York sucks so, so for their gas price, so don't worry about that. But honestly, if you can avoid getting your gas in Connecticut, avoid getting your gas here because you can save some real money going to other states. And the thing is, I know a lot of travelers, they don't like using, you know, cars. They don't like driving around. They want to use public transportation. Well, guess what? Don't worry, you can use the train when you're here in Connecticut. Because if you're going, because if you look at the train lines, the line from Boston to New York and DC goes through Connecticut. So you can stop off in Providence. You can get off here in Mystic. I mean, you can go to New Haven. There's all kinds of great stops along the way and you can use the trains to get there. And the thing is, is 
like a place like Mystic, or if you're going to go farther afield down through Connecticut, doesn't actually make that bad of a base for you to do day trips to Boston or New York. For example, here in Mystic, hour and 20 some minutes to get to Boston, maybe about two hours to get to New York, 45 minutes to Providence. I mean, you can use this as a base and have this nice kind of quaint seaside town or seaside villages or wherever you stay, and then go to the big cities for the day instead of, you know, spending insane money for those hotels, come stay here. But I will say there is one train. If you can get to Essex and do the Essex steam train, that's pretty cool, okay? And if wheeled ground transportation isn't for you, there's plenty of water transportation as well. If you're here at Mystic Seaport, you can go take a ride out in a boat, right? Heck, you go to Chester, you can take a ferry over and go see Gillette Castle. I mean, there's a lot of water stuff you can actually do when you are here. I know for us, we actually went fishing out in Long Island Sound and, and went farther out, and it was just such a cool experience, but you can actually get out on the water as well. So yes, we got your driving cover, we got your train cover, we've got your boats covered, we got it all. I mean, you want to fly? Yeah, you're probably going to drive down to New York for better flight prices, but just giving you an idea of the options you do have. Now, my next stone for you has to do with the food, and that is don't be afraid to eat seafood from the side of the road. Look, if you see places like here in Mystic, there's the sea swirl, but when you go around, you'll see these like hut slash restaurant slash ice cream spots slash you know, clam shacks kind of on the side of the road, and you'll see people eating outside, no problem. I'm gonna tell you is don't worry if you go there and eat because my goodness, you can get whole belly clams. Oh, fried whole belly clams are so good. Clam strips, you know, you can get lobster, hot lobster rolls or lobster salad rolls. I mean, you can get so much great food from the side of the road. Now, they're awesome and they're super tasty, but don't think eating on the side of the road will make it cheap because that seafood thing will be expensive. And I got to tell you, coming to Connecticut, I got to tell you this, Don, is don't think coming to Connecticut is going to be a cheap vacation. Whether it's accommodation or gas or food, you will be spending money when you are here. This is not a cheap place to be. So if I'm going to talk about food, like the oysters and other things, I really have to talk about probably the type of food that people from Connecticut are the most kind of psycho about, and it's pizza. Yes, all this amazing seafood they have here, scallops from Stonington and all the things, oh, it's so good. But the people here are most psychotic about their pizza, okay? And what I'm going to tell you for that is don't diss New Haven-style pizza. For those of you that like the really thin kind of crackery crust, ah, coal-fired, coal-fired ovens. Oh my God, it's so good. Pepe's is probably the most famous one. They've got branches around the state. You can grab it, but it's super thin, cracker thin, so good. One of the popular ones they have is a white clam pizza. I will tell you, if you don't like clams, I would not get that, even though it's a popular pizza. You can get at Pepe's, you can get their tomato pie. Oh, also, uh, don't be surprised if they call it a pie instead of a pizza, or they call it a pizza pie. It's just how they roll here. But honestly, I mean, you can go to Sally's in New Haven. I mean, Pepe's is probably the biggest one that we've had. It's really good, but it's the thin stuff that you really want to get. But seriously, don't like badmouth it because people really go crazy about their pizza here. I mean, they have like charts that say, oh, it's like a radiating out, like, okay, you're in New Haven, everything is good. A little bit out of New Haven, it's still okay. Then once you get farther out, they're like, how dare you eat this? You'll, it's not worth it, don't do it. I mean, they, they, they are pizza, pizza fanatics here. Now, I know when I have my pizza, I love to have a cold beer, right? And one thing I'm gonna say is, don't worry about the local beers when you're here because they have tons of great breweries here. And you know, by Mystic, you got Beard. I mean, there's just ton honestly, Katra, there's so many good breweries in Connecticut that you will definitely find great beers when you're here. But if you're looking for something stronger, I have a dome for that. Don't expect to find the hard alcohol in the grocery store. You go to Big Y, yeah, you'll get your beer and, and lighter alcohol stuff, but for the heavier things, you have to go to a packaged liquor store or a packy and get your things there, and they might have different hours than other stores. So if you're coming here for the weekend or you're coming for a bit, make sure you stop at the normal store and then go to the packy as well. If, of course, you partake in adult beverages and are over the age of 21. Now, my next stone for you is don't think that Maine and Vermont, New Hampshire have a monopoly on leaf peeping. Look, if you come here to Connecticut, I mean, it is just gorgeous driving around the state. I'm not gonna lie to you. It is just beautiful with the winding roads and the trees everywhere. But when fall comes and the leaves change, 
People from Connecticut, they don't have to go up to Maine. They don't have to go to Vermont, New Hampshire. They can see it change here, and it's gorgeous. And if you're looking for a place to go, Litchfield County is probably the best one to go to because it is a gorgeous place And when you're going through the little towns there. But it's just the nature that's there and the leaves changing. It's just like on fire. It is just, just know that you don't have to leave the state to see some beautiful foliage. And when you're planning your visit to Connecticut, another don't I have for you is don't expect to find a lot of the chain hotels and chain restaurants when you're going to be going to places like Mystic or you're going to go to you know other small towns around because there are some chains, but people here in Connecticut, they love their local restaurants. They love their local inns. So you have tons of private inns, bed and breakfasts, small motels. You're going to have to do that and book with them directly because they might not show up on TripAdvisor or Trivago. So what you might want to do is look at the town or the village or, or the area you want to go to and go to Google Maps and zoom in and see what pops up. And you'll see an in on there and then click and then go to their website or give them a call and then book because this is definitely much more of a you find a local inn than you do a, than you do a chain hotel. If you're in a big city like Hartford, that's different. But you're not coming to Connecticut to see Hartford. You're coming here to see the beautiful nature and the coast. Now, another don't I have for you is don't just lose your money at Foxwoods or Mohegan Sun. I mean, these are two of the big resort casinos that I have here in Connecticut that you can go visit. But the thing is, is right by Foxwoods, you can actually see it from Foxwoods and maybe about a 20 minute drive from Mohegan Sun. You have one of the best Native American museums in the U.S., the Pequot Museum. Or I should say the Mashantucket Pequot Museum and Resource Center. I mean, this is an incredible museum. Honestly, you go through, they recreate a Pequot village and the detail in the mannequins that are there, you'd swear they were real people and they just froze time. I mean, with like, you can see the veins in their hands and the tattoos and just everything. I mean, you really see what it was and it's just a fantastic museum to go to and you actually take a 18 stories up elevator and see a view of the valley and and the area and it's really kind of cool but just know you don't just have to go to foxwoods and lose money they actually have good shows there and at mohegan sun they they, they have uh, good shows there too but for me going to the pequot museum it was outstanding. We went, even my youngest is like, this is really cool. And if you go there, I guarantee when you talk to people around Connecticut, they've been there too. So you have something to, you know, strike up a conversation about. I only have a couple more don'ts I want to share with you. One thing is we are in New England and this is definitely a Dunkin' Donuts state. And so when you're in Connecticut, just realize that if you're going to be, you know, having a, a house rental or you're going to be at a inn and stuff, like if the inns and the B&Bs have breakfast for you, you're fine. But if they don't, just know that Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' is going to be kind of your breakfast buddy for your visit when you are here. And even though there are tons of great cafes, tons of great coffee shops that you can go to when you are here in Connecticut. I mean, Sift, I mean, it's a bakery here in Mystic. It's just unbelievable. But people still go to Dunkin' and, and don't diss it because it is kind of part of who they are. So just have a heads up for it. And it is okay to look on in disdain if you see people walking out of a Starbucks here. Okay, just, just let you know that. And then my last don't for you is... Don't think just because something sounds like it might be for kids, it's not worth going to visit. Look, coming here to Mystic Seaport is an amazing experience. It is really cool. Something you really should do. But if you're in Norwalk, the aquarium there is really cool. The aquarium here in Mystic is really cool. I mean, if you've got kids, yes, the Norwalk Children's Museum is top notch. But the thing is, we've got state parks all over the state that you can visit. Waterfalls, you can see all kinds of nature, do all kinds of hikes. And yes, they're ringing the bell to say, get finished with this video. You didn't talk about all the trails that are here, too, you can go on. Yes, there's antique trails you can go on and see the antiques. There's a Connecticut wine trail you can go on. Heck, there's bike trails as well through one of the state parks. So you've got a lot of options when you are here in Connecticut. So I hope this gets you to actually come to Connecticut. So don't skip it. I hope it helps you out. But definitely come here to Mystic Seaport if you are in Connecticut because... It is a wonderful time, and we've enjoyed coming here year after year. Like I said, our kids have been doing camps here for years, and we've always enjoyed it. So have a great one, and I'll say bye from here in Mystic, Connecticut.